Father, I, poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. On this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, is called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name.
wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
St. John, the 12th chapter. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord.
Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary,
grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text, the revelation of St. John, the 12th chapter. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who's called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. It's the most glorious day one that is just hardly rivaled uh, in nature uh, in the church, the festival of St. Michael and all angels. It's most glorious because they're forgotten, sadly so, in your life and mine. And for a moment, the Word of God breaks in and reminds us of more glorious and profound things that the gospel brings to us. Christ Jesus, not made like the angels, but like you and me, to redeem us from sin and death, but never Christ Jesus alone, but with him the whole company of the heavenly host, to keep your children safe guard your bodies as you come and go, to ascend, to attend your souls when you breathe your last, to carry them to that uh, great place of the Lamb upon the throne, uh, where the song uh, never ends, St. Michael and all angels, the most beautiful reminder of what is true, that we don't see it with our eyes, that with Christ uh, uh, there are uh, eternal warriors who are uh, fighting against uh, the devil who would attack us in our flesh, who are holding him back, who are holding our sins back, that we might be kept safe until our names too are written in the book of life. Some of them we know by name, particularly St. Michael, also Gabriel, and still further, Satan. Some we only know uh, by number, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace to men on earth. Michael seems to be the captain of all the angels who takes up the struggle with the devil from the fall into sin until the incarnation of Christ. And even he is not a ma match for Lucifer, but only an equal. And only he is able uh, to spew forth that full-grown serpent now the dragon from heaven with the blood of the Lamb and the word of the martyr's testimony. Michael, we know by name. What a glorious name to give to your son or even to your daughter, maybe Michaela. Michael is the one who fights against all evil and who overcomes by the death of of Jesus by the blood that pours from the chalice upon our lips and makes us those free from shame for Christ Jesus' sake and the company that fights for us with him. He's fierce. The faith is worthy of fighting for in heaven and on earth. So Michael reminds us and when you fight for your children's sake in this life and for your own sake that you might be a Christian, you are not alone. You also know well Gabriel from 
the incarnation of our Lord, made a boy uh, for our boys, made a man for us men and for our salvation, incarnate as a human being and not as one of the heavenly host to redeem us from our sins. Gabriel preaches him. He says those beautiful words, do not be afraid, because if you're against Gabriel and the host of heaven who stand with Christ, you ought to be afraid. But if you hear the gospel and you believe it, you never need be afraid. Fear not, Mary, that which is conceived in you is of the Holy Spirit, a Savior for sinners, so Gabriel preaches. Of course, we also know Satan. We prefer not. We might know him better than we know Michael or Gabriel because he's always hounding us, always plaguing us always working with our fallen nature to lead us away from Christ Jesus, to lead us away from our place in heaven, to try to blot our names from the book of life if he could, but he's a liar because he can't. Because Christ Jesus holds you, and Michael and Gabriel and those who shut the lion's mouths, those who passed over Pharaoh's Egypt, those who sat at the empty tomb, they're on your side. And he can harm us not. He's judged. The deed is done. But boy, do we feel him. And boy, do we forget that Christ holds the field forever. And my, how we worry that we might even be in his possession and not in Christ. Well, repent. And here on this glorious day that it is not so, Satan cannot have you. Because you belong to Jesus. And the blood of the Lamb pours for you. We know their number is great, vast, we sing of them the Sabaoth Lord, and there's none other God, that is to say the angel armies of heaven attend the Christ. The book of Revelation especially puts them before our eyes by faith, that we might see that they're on our side, and that they hold our place in heaven that they hold heaven's field, that they are the victors, that the devil has been thrown down, though his army too is vast. We see their number is countless, especially as we hear from the Holy Scriptures that they will attend Christ at the last trumpet's sound. Their work especially to judge the church victorious, and the heathen uh, worthy of hell prepared uh, for Satan and all his host too. Satan has a host himself more than we can number. The book of Revelation confesses them inferior to Christ and his angels, but he has many. And you see these demons wag their tongue and especially attack the church of God in the flesh of Jesus as they come out especially so at the time of Christ's incarnation, his suffering and death. But as you also well know, Christ Jesus always sends them away in heaven but also on earth sends them into the pigs and they run over the cliff. He sends them out of our children when they would do them harm. He even sends the devil away with the word of the Holy uh, Scriptures. The demons 
they are well seen in our days, though they often try to hide themselves. But when they reveal themselves, they too are liars, and they would have you think that there is no hope for your redemption. Well, Christ Jesus has put you secure in this church, where the angels now even attend that you would confess today that they're wrong, that your sins are forgiven, your shame is covered, your children are safe in the word of Christ Jesus. You see, they're losing the devil and his starry host. They're falling back. They have no more place in heaven because Christ has taken his rightful place the right hand of the Father in heaven. It's not Satan who hears your prayers today. He's been spewed out. It's the Lord Jesus. The Lord Christ and Gabriel and Michael, they're in two realms. They're found on heaven. They're found here also on earth. They're before God. They come and go on Jacob's ladder. They come and go on the ladder that is your baptism. They come and go from heaven where our children's angels present themselves before the Father to declare us holy and righteous and our cause true for Jesus' sake. But they're also here where Jesus is found with us always to the very end of the age. What a glorious day if you forgot the work of the holy angels to keep your children, to keep you in the faith, to keep you until the great judgment of the living and the dead, to fight with you against all evil, to help you when you fall to temptation's way. To preach to you that a Redeemer has come stronger than you and even stronger than they, our Lord Jesus Christ. They're both in heaven and they're on earth that they might carry our bodies from heaven on that last great day, from earth to heaven, that they might be with the heavenly host, the Sabbath Lord, that we might sing his praise. Satan, he's just here. Satan, he's been thrown out. He's had to fall back. And he's angry, so it's glorious for those who have died in Christ, but it's rough for you and for me. He's had to fall back. He's consolidated. With Christ's ascension to the Father's throne, the devil can't accuse Job any longer. He can't accuse you or me before the Father, but boy, can he wag his tongue at us here and now, and boy, does he, because he knows his time is short. So a window into heaven this day, the devil's not winning. He's not uh, getting carried away with you. He's not going to prevail no matter how bad it looks. But he's a crazed devil now because he's been thrown out and he knows his day is coming and he knows his time is short. So maybe this day can help us focus and see what is true, that our names are written in the book of life that we can rejoice, not in ourselves or in our own work, but we can rejoice that Christ has given us authority for his sake to cast the demons from our homes with his blood and with his word. Don't think too highly of yourself. Don't think too highly of your works. Don't try to please the Father in heaven for who you are and what you do. Because even St. Michael's not a match for the devil, save one thing, and that's the blood of Christ. Not even Adam and Eve in their perfect state could best the devil. 
How on earth do you think you could, with your works or your good personish or your efforts to be just so right or to think so little of the evil foe that would assail us? Don't think too highly of yourself because St. Michael only prevails in the word of Christ and the blood of the Lamb, and that act alone has set all things right for you and your household, and that act alone, the death and life and ascension of Jesus to his right place with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. That act alone, the blood of Jesus shed for us, keeps us safe and brings all the hosts of heaven to our side, that they might be our companions now and we might be their companions then, to the glory of God and to the praise of the Lamb on the center of his throne, which knows no end. In Jesus' name we are safe. We know their names a bit, but they know our names full well. Because with our Christ, they fight for us. What a glorious day. All praise for the angels. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ. Amen.
Gary Gokey, Bells Palsy. We pray for Megan Brand. We pray for a friend to Nancy Brennan, Debbie in Kansas City, who's fallen in ICU. We pray for Dustin Green's aunt, Lucille, who's had a stroke. We pray, pray for Heather Mallory. Pray for Jean Bushcotter, who's recovering from surgery. Pray for uh, Jeannie Grunke. Jeannie Grunke. Please rise. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people. We give you thanks for the countless blessings you have bestowed on us according to your grace. We praise uh, you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the angels that attend them, that attend him uh, and us, for all your many gifts. Grant and preserve your church throughout the world, uh, granting her pastors to preach faith. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe. Send laborers in your harvest. Open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, grant repentance to the enemies of your church. Grant them amendment of life. Protect us in all trials and dangers. Strengthen us and all Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the fight of good faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. bestow your grace on all the nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound. We commend to you the care of our schools, so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, and bring forth the fruits of faith. Lord, in your mercy, accept, we pray, you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, with the offerings we bring before you as our service. Grant your Holy Spirit to those who come to the Lord's table this day that they may receive the body and blood of Christ in sincere repentance and firm faith to their blessing. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. When our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
united with one accord by the heavens and all the powers therein. The cherubim and seraphim sing your heart praise, and with them we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Christ given for you. The Lord bless you keep your baptismal grace. Amen. The true body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless you keep your baptismal grace. Amen. The true body of Christ given for you. The true body of Christ given for you. The true body of Christ given for you.
Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.